Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. So I have my first band gig coming up soon, coming up tomorrow actually, so I need to change my strings. Uh, a couple of weeks ago I did a string change video on my acoustic guitar on my Taylor GS Mini um, and I'm going to do the same thing now with my Strat or my Exotic XSC2. And the reason I'm doing another video on, on changing the strings is that the headstock is different and the mechanisms for putting the strings on are going to be different as well. So. It, this is particularly useful for anyone who has an exotic guitar and isn't sure about how to change the strings uh, because it's got a funny locking mechanism to it and there doesn't seem to be much material out there on how to properly correctly change the strings so I've come up with some you know a way that I do it and I just want to share that with you in case it helps someone out there uh, and this is going to be generally how to change strings with guitars with uh, locking tuners so this is my exotic XSC2 let me just turn it over a bit. So you, these are locking tuners. This is a very vintage guitar, but when you look at the back, let me get this in shot, you'll see that they look very, they look like standard Fender ones, which is the idea. This is meant to be a vin very vintage looking guitar, vintage guitar, but they are actually locking. There is headstock neck, and there is the body. So you will have seen this in some videos that I've used. Um, and all the videos that you've seen me use this on so far, the strings are the same same strings. So we're going to change that because as good as they feel, I don't trust them to be safe for a gig that you're getting paid for. So it's always good to change strings in, in situations like this. So the strings I normally use are the Daddario NYXL strings, 10 to 46. Uh, either that or the Ernie Ball Cobalt strings of the same gauge. Uh, it turns out I've run out of both of those. Um, I guess I didn't expect to change strings while on lockdown last year. I still have some of these left though. I've got some Paradigm, some Ernie Ball Paradigm strings which I'm going to use. R the right gauge, yeah, arguably better, but I'm not noticing massive difference. But they'll they'll do they'll be fine. They'll be good. So we're going to put those on today. First thing I'm going to do is to take the strings off. So immediately we're going to start off with how to remove the strings on these excess exotic XSC guitars. You'll see that there's like zero winds there, like half a wind on this on the uh, around the posts here. Uh, and that's one way you can tell that they're the, the uh, tuners are locking tuners because you don't need to have any winds with locking tuners. So with these apparently what you're supposed to do is just tune them normally and they lock up automatically. I haven't really found that. I found it doesn't seem to work that way. So I always kind of need to have a coin with me. You can get one of these um, affiliate links in the, in the description below. Uh, these, these only cost £1.50. I'm joking. It's a 1p coin for anyone who doesn't know. So what I like to do is start with the low E string. I'm going to take this one off. I'm going to put this. I'm going to, in fact, first of all, I'm going to detune it. So it's only, again, only half a wind. And I'm going to angle it so that the hole is almost exactly in line of the string, but slightly at an angle. And then I'm going to put the coin in there to hold it in position. Then I'm going to continue to loosen the string. But you'll notice as I turn it, the string is staying in position. So this is unlocking it. I'm not sure how many turns it requires, but you'll know when you can pull the string out. Maybe a little bit more. Still, a, it sounds like it's gripping a little bit. Turn that a little bit more. There we go. And I'm going to continue for all the other ones. Right, there we go. Strings are off of the tuning pegs. If you watch my uh, other video on, on changing strings, I had this brush, which I'm going to use here as well, just to kind of dust off the hard to reach areas. Might as well dust down the guitar as well. And around the pickups too. All right. And then I'm just going to take the strings out from this part of the guitar, this side of the guitar as well. All right, I like to use the string clippers now and just cut these off and then just pull them out from the other side. There you go, so there's the ball ends. Then I'll just pull, pull the strings out from the front. So you see these retract. There you go, strings removed. Always nice to be tidy with your mess. So you can just chuck this away later on. There's my guitar now. Not quite in focus, but there it is. And I need to now clean the body. So I'm going to use this. 
lizard spit guitar polish. I'm just going to use it on the body because apparently you shouldn't use guitar polish on a maple neck, maple, maple fretboard. So I'm not going to. I'm not going to do this. I might clean the frets a little bit there. Um, if I did, if I had say a rosewood fretboard, I would stick some of this on. We've, we saw this in the last video, the Dario Hydrate fretboard conditioner. Directions: Apply lizard spit to instrument surface and/or to lizard spit microfiber polish cloth. Apply sparingly to grimy area, buff to shine. Uh, some vintage instruments may have to have a buildup of wax, which may have to be professionally removed. Okay, so next step, this stuff, the Dario friction remover, uh, and this is to be used in the nut. And I'm also going to use it on the other end as well, on the bridge here, which you can just about see my hand out of focus moving. Uh, anywhere where the, where the string is going to rub across. And what this does is it removes, uh, helps to remove the friction so that your guitar will not get caught uh, anywhere when you're bending or when you're just playing in general. So in theory, you should keep your guitar in tune longer. So let's do that. So you, it comes with this syringe which has the, uh, the, the stuff pre-loaded inside it. And you get these two applicators. I'm not sure what the, what the actual word is, uh, but they're different sizes. This is slightly smaller. It's got a little, can you, if you look at the head there, I don't know how much that focus, not much probably. Um, there's a little kind of brush on the end for different size uh, areas. So what we're gonna do is remove the tip from here and just apply to the nut. Let's see how close we can get on this as well. Use this for the bigger slots. I'm just going to just push it in there. And on the bridge end, I'm going to apply some here as well. I guess I could apply some down here as well, but I'll use the excess from the brush to, uh, to do that. Excess on the brush here, so I'm going to stick it on these bits down here. Where, it goes through, where the string goes through the hole. So that's the, the Dario Lubricate Friction Remover applied. Put that away now. All right, the bit you've all been waiting for, the actual string change. So that's all the prep done. All right, so start with um, 46, the uh, low E string. So it's gonna be the same process. It's gonna be the same process for every string pretty much. Uh, so I'm going to thread this through underneath the hole. In fact, I'll do I'll do all of the strings first. So that's all the strings threaded through. Here we go. Some people like to take one string off and put them on one at a time. That's fine. You can do that. There's nothing wrong with doing that. In fact, that's probably a better way. The idea being that it keeps the tension on the truss rod. Uh, pretty much equalized throughout the whole process. I, I like to do it this way just because it's a little bit easier. All right, so let's attach the strings to the tuning pegs now. So remember, this is an exotic guitar, so they have a bit of a slightly different way of, uh, well, they've got locking tuners, but they do attach in a kind of funny way. So for anyone out there who's, who's got a guitar like this or is thinking of getting one or just wants to know how to do it on this, uh, this is how to do it. It's essentially the same as, when you do it with any kind of locking system, except maybe the PRS one, I'm not sure how those work actually, I can't remember. They, they've got their own system of doing it. So this part is the same. So we're gonna thread the string through. I'm starting with the low E string. In fact, before I do that, I'll just quickly polish out some of these frets. Right, back to the E string. So like with most guitars which have a locking tuner, we're gonna thread it through. And that's why I've got the, the, the holes kind of faced in this angle, so I can thread it all the way through thread it through, if it will fit, there we go, all the way through, make sure on, on, on this end, on the uh, on the bridge end, actually sure pull the string all the way up, because sometimes it gets caught uh, and it ends up kind of getting uncaught while you're tuning and then you get this big noise, this big kadong, which you don't really want. All right, let me just get the angle back. All right, so I've just pulled the string all the way through, and now I'm going to do reverse of what I did before. I'm going to tighten it. This gets a little bit fiddly. You kind of need three hands for this. I'm going to put the coin back in here. I'm going to try and hold the coin. I'm going to hold this excess string as well. And I'm going to start tightening it. So that should be this way. 
but uh, you should find that this string will stay in place. You might feel the pressure on this hand. I can feel it now as I'm tightening it. And what that's doing is it's locking the string in. So after I do a few more winds, that string isn't going anywhere. And then you just tune it up. So now it's locked and you tune it up. So it's kind of similar to how you would do it with other locking tuners. Let's do the other strings. A string. So let's go for it again. I'm going to thread it through. There we go. So I'm going to thread it through, check the other end to make sure that it's not, that the ball end doesn't get stuck before the bridge. All the way through. I'm going to lock it, take my coin, jam it in there, I hold the string like that, start tuning up holding the string in place. You can feel it tighten, in this case, my right hand. Give it a few turns. Let's check to make sure it's locked. Yep, that's locked, and then tune up. So here I'm, the angle's a bit funny, so I'm using my middle finger here to just hold down the string against the, um, against the headstock while I tighten up the, uh, the lock, while I lock it up. It was part of my jiu-jitsu training that's helped me to realise I can do that. All right, and then tighten this one up. So I've got my strings on, still got the hair. Hasn't been tuned yet, and we're going to do that now. It's what I mentioned earlier on about making sure that the ball ends have come all the way through. Sometimes at this point, if they haven't come all the way through, you hear a ping, and all of a sudden your string will be really loose, and you think you've broken the string. But it's just that the string is actually gone all the way because as you've been tuning it up the pressure has pulled the string through and then you you get some extra string which you don't want because it doesn't help with your tuning because there's too much uh, there's too much slack there we go all tuned ready to go not quite all right even unplugged you can probably hear that sounds not very good so these strings are brand new, so they're going to be they're going to go out of tune quite a bit at first. I'm sure you know that already, but for anyone who doesn't, that is a that is a fact. So I'm going to stretch these strings in now. So you're basically wearing the strings in a bit. So I'm going to do is I'm going to start pulling up on the string, and I'm going to hold it down here just to make sure it doesn't pop out of the uh, the nut. I like to start around the back where the imaginary twenty fourth fret would be, just kind of around the back here somewhere. I'm going to pull up, maybe a couple of times. Same thing with the twelfth fret. And fifth fret and then repeat for all the other strings I can already feel that's quite floppy it's gone down to a G I'll tune this back up in a second so let's do the other string let's stretch in the other strings right let's check the tuning again it's gone gone out which is normal let's tune up again check tuning again Still a bit out, so we've got, we've got to do it a couple of times. We've got to stretch a couple of times. It's getting closer. Pretty much. Right, let's give this a haircut. So the last thing I want to do is to just get rid of all of this. And I usually like to keep it, like to leave a little bit of length, controversially. A lot of people like to cut it as short as they can. I like to leave a little bit of length, the reason being that it doesn't become as pokey as it is if it's really short. With that being said, I've been wondering about keeping it shorter instead. So I'm, I'm going to try today, I'm going to go, I'm going to go shorter than I normally would today. So let's go, let's go. No, I don't know if that's too long for some of you, I don't know if you can see that. There we go. That is my exotic XSC2, restrung and hopefully ready to go. I might play it in a bit to get those strings a bit more stretched, but yeah, there we go. So if you found that video useful, please consider giving this video a like uh, and give my other videos a like if you like those too. And please consider subscribing as well. I'm trying to reach my first 1000 subscribers uh, and uh, you subscribing will it will help me get there. I can't do this on my own, I need your help. So please, uh, yeah, please consider doing that. And I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed this channel and I hope it's been useful for you. And I'll see you in the next video.